Good day everyone! Welcome to another video lesson in General Mathematics 11. Ang pag-uusapan natin sa video lesson na ito ay tungkol sa solving problems involving functions. And here are the objectives for today's discussion. First, identify the function to be used in representing the problem. Second, write the function that describes the problem and solve problems involving functions. In the previous lessons, you have learned a lot about functions. So, in solving mathematical problems, it is very important to fully understand the problem to make a better move. We have to analyze to find the best equation and then evaluate to find the answer. So here are the following steps, specifically four steps, that can be helpful in solving problems involving function. First, read and analyze the problem carefully and explore what the problem is about. You need to identify the given information first, then identify what you are asked to find. Then choose a variable to represent one of the unspecified values in the problem. Second, plan the solution. Find a word, a phrase, or a sentence that contains a clue on how to solve the problem. Then formulate an equation based on that clue. Then third, solve the problem to simplify Follow the order of operations or the PEMDAS rule, the parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And lastly, you need to examine the solution. Check if the conclusion agrees with the problem or satisfy all conditions of the problem. Otherwise, it is good advice to rework the problem. Alright, let's have the example number one. And our problem is, the average of the two alternate even integers is 12. Find the integer n. Applying the steps in solving problems, we have the step number 1, analyze. So, kailangan nating alamin kung ano yung nawawala sa problem. And that is, find the integer n. So, let n be the unknown integer. The next clue naman natin ngayon is the two alternate even integers. At ito naman yung n and n plus 4. And last clue naman natin ngayon ay average. Ibig sabihin ng average, we need to divide the sum of the two integers into 2. Pagkatapos nating ma-analyze kung ano yung nawawala sa problem, we need to plan the solution. At kailangan nating mag-formulate ng equation and that is n, which is our first integer, and n plus 4, our second integer, and let's find their average, and that is n plus n plus 4 divided by 2 equals 12. So, pwede na natin isolve ang ating equation na ito. So, applying the basic operations and the PEMDAS rule, gagamitin natin ang ating equation kanina, so, n plus n plus 4 divided by 2 equals 12. So, combining like terms, that is, n plus n is equal to 2n, then copy plus 4 divided by 2 equals 12. Para mapadali yung ating pagsasolve, pwede nating uh, isimplify ang ating left side of the equation sa pamamagitan ng pag-iisip kung ano ang kanilang common factor. At ang kanilang common factor ngayon ay 2. So, ano kaya ang magiging sagot natin? So, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So, that is n plus 2 equals 12. Then next, we need to transpose positive 2 to the right side of the equation. Bakit? Para malaman natin kung ano ang value ni n. Kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng i-combine si n plus 2. Okay? So, n equals 12 minus 2 and our final answer is n equals 10. So, itong n equals 10 na ito, ito yung ating unang integers pa lang. So, kailangan nating isolve ang ating pangalawang integer. So, since n is equal to 10, solve for the second integer. So, mamagitan ng ating equation kanina na n plus 4, 
So, by just substitution, so, isa substitute natin yung value ni n, which is 10. So, 10 plus 4 equals 14. So, ibig sabihin, ang ating integers ngayon ay 10 and 14. So, para malaman natin kung tama ba ang ating mga sagot, magpo-proceed tayo ngayon sa ating step 4. Okay, ito din yung tinatawag nating checking. So, gamit ang ating original equation, which is n plus n plus 4 divided by 2 equals 12. So, gagamitin natin ay 10 na value ni n. Okay, so by substitution, 10 plus 10 plus 4 divided by 2 equals 12. So, unahin muna natin yung nasa loob ng ating parentheses. And that is 10 plus 4 equals 14. So, 10 plus 14 divided by 2 equals 12. So, 10 plus 14 is 24. So, 24 divided by 12 equals 12. So, 12 equals 12. So, ibig sabihin, ang ating value ng n na 10 ay solution sa ating equation. Let's have another example. And here is our problem. A triangular wall decor has a height which is twice its base B. Find the area if the base is equal to 5 inches. So applying again the four steps in solving problems. So step number one is analyze. So kailangan natin identify kung ano yung mga given sa problem. And that is the base, the height, and the area. So, here is our given. So, base is 5 inches. Height is 2B because that is twice its base. And area is unknown. Kasi yun yung hinahanap natin. So, next, alamin naman natin ngayon kung ano ang magiging equation natin. So, base sa ating uh, problem, Triangular. So, ibig sabihin, gagamitin natin yung formula ng area of a triangle, which is area is equal to height times base divided by 2. So, by using that one, ito yung magiging equation natin. Bakit? Ang height lang po ang napalitan kasi ang sabi dito, ang height po ay twice its base. So, magiging 2B siya. Remain pa rin yung B and divided by 2. So, meron na tayong equation ngayon. So, pwede na nating isolve kung ano ang magiging area ng triangle. Okay? So, given the formula, ang ating base ay 5. So, area equals 2 times 5 times 5 divided by 2. Then next, 2 times 5 times 5 equals 50 divided by 2. So, ibig sabihin, ang ating A equals 25. Therefore, the area of the triangular wall decor is 25 square inches. So, let's examine if our answer is correct by checking it. So, by using, again, the original formula, which is A equals 2B times B divided by 2. So, area natin kanina is 25 is equals 2 times 5 times 5 divided by 2. So, 25 equals 50 divided by 2. So, 25. Therefore, 25 equals 25. Another example. A user is charged 200 pesos for an unlimited internet connection for 5 days. Additional 15 pesos will be paid to extend the subscription per day. Use a piecewise function to represent the internet fees in terms of days of subscription. How much will you pay if you subscribe for 4 days? How about 9 days? So this example is an application of piecewise function. So let's apply the steps in solving problems. So proceed tayo sa step number 1. Let's analyze. 200 pesos is charged for an only internet connection for 5 days. An additional 15 pesos per day for extension of use. So, proceed ayo sa step number 2 for the formula to be used. 
okay? So let F be the internet fee and D is the number of days of subscription, okay? So F of D equals 200. So this is the formula for uh, the amount of fees in five days or below. Next, F of D equals 200 plus 15 times D minus 5. And this is the formula naman to find the amount of fees in more than 5 days. So now, pagsasamahin natin itong dalawang to para makabuo tayo ng piecewise function. And that is, F of D equals 200 if D is less than or equal to 5. 200 plus 15 times D minus 5 if D is greater than 5. So, ito yung mga gagamitin nating formula, depende kung ano ang tanong. So, proceed tayo sa ating step 3. So, since kanina ang tanong, how much will you pay if you subscribe for 4 days only? Okay? So, if D is equal to 4 days, and that is F of 4 is equal to 200, the user will pay 200 pesos only. Since the equation is a constant, it will not change. Okay? So, kung 4 days, 3 days, 2 days, 1 day, 200 pesos pa rin. What about if it is 9 days? If D is equal to 9 days, that is F of 9 equals 200 plus 15 times 9 minus 5 is equal to 260 pesos. So, the user will pay 260 pesos for 9 days. Okay? So, next, let's proceed to another example. According to World Health Organization, the right formula to disinfect the house is 90% water and 10% bleach. A 4,000 ml solution contains 15% bleach. How much water must be added so that the solution will be 90% water and 10% bleach. Okay, so step number one, analyze. 10% bleach solution is equal to 90% water. 15% bleach solution equals 85% solution. So if it is 4,000 ml, this is the original solution. So, let Y be the amount of water to be added. So, this is our plan for the solution. Okay? So, this is the original solution column, additional water column, and the outcomes result column. So, water amount product. If it is 85%, that is equal to 0.85. 100%, that is 1. 90%, that is 0.90. And the amount of water for the original solution is 4,000 ml. And for the additional water, that is Y. And the result is 4,000 plus Y. Next, the product, 4,000 times 0.85. 1 times Y. Then 4,000 plus Y times 0.90. So pagsamahin natin, Original solutions plus additional water equals outcomes or result. So, 4,000 times 0.85 plus Y equals 4,000 plus Y times 0.90. Okay, so let's proceed to our step 3. Let's use the original equation. That is 4,000 times 0.85 plus Y equals 4,000 plus Y times 0.90. Okay? So, 4,000 times 0.85, that is 3,400. Plus, Y equals, by distribution property of multiplication, 4,000 times 0.90, that is 3,600. Y times 0.90, that is plus 0.90Y. Next, Combining like terms, transposition property, so y minus 0.90y, 3,600 minus 3,400. Okay? 
So y minus 0.90y, that is 0.10y, equals 3,600 minus 3,400, that is 200. Next, divide both sides of the equation by 0.10. So that is 0.10 divided by 0.10, that is y. So 200 divided by 0.10, that is 2,000. Therefore, we need to add 2,000 ml of water for us to have a 10% solution of bleach. Alright, thank you for watching. For more inquiries or questions, you can ask your subject teacher. Goodbye!